Hey there, don't mind the uh, construction zone. This is the uh, duplex that we're working on, trying to get this all renovated. As you can see, there is plenty to do here, so I'm not in any hurry to uh, write a blog about this. So hopefully you've gotten all of your core topic ideas kind of strung out, you know, between five and 10 of them um, with the workbook book in the previous video. And then now in this video, we're gonna go through the keyword research portion and actually help you get things rolling to see if you can actually choose one of those topics primarily that's a, a good winner for keyword research difficulty and uh, you can actually uh, get rolling on your blog and we can actually start you know getting things going on wordpress all right so in this video we're going to be uh, in the computer and we're going to be following along as i do some keyword research for a couple different topics and you can do the same thing for your own topic if you have any questions at all, be sure to leave a comment down below and we'll get to them. And hopefully this is helpful for you in picking your blog topic for your WordPress blogging adventure. All right, we'll see you in there. Now we're gonna jump into the computer. Hopefully you've gotten some things written down You've gone through the workbook, jotted ideas down, seen if there's any overlap, crossed some ideas out, and now we're going to jump into the computer and we're gonna use the tool called keysearch.io. And this tool is only $17 a month, so you could get started. I think they have a free trial as well. We could use Ahrefs, um, however, you only get a seven day, $7 trial with it. And you may want a little bit more time with it. And also Ahrefs is a little bit of a steeper learning curve. There's a lot going on in it. And I wanna provide something that's easy to access and that is a little bit more affordable that you could potentially use from here on out as a, a keyword research tool for you to use with your blog and also as a rank tracker for your blog. That being said, we're gonna jump into the tool here if you go to the link down in the description below, then you'll be able to jump in and subscribe to the monthly plan or the yearly plan. I'm just using the starter package right now to show you what you can do with that. All right, so you've got a few topic ideas in front of you that you've written down, and now we're gonna go to the keyword research tool and we're gonna start typing them in. And specifically, we're going to type them in with the biggest, broadest, Keyword. So, like for me, I you know I'm really into cycling, so I'm gonna initially say cycling, and we're gonna say all locations. You could specify if you are in a particular country, but we're just gonna say all locations, and then we're gonna look for related keywords with that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and say search here, and now cycling itself is quite difficult. The competition is very difficult. It's a 63. Now there are a ton of searches on this, right? So, um, you know, the search trend is quite high with this. Now, it's something like to the tune of uh, 300,000 300, searches a month for the keyword cycling, which is quite insane. Now, if we look on the right-hand side over here, we've got other keywords like it, some related keywords, and if we, Keep in mind the volume along with the cost per click. That is something that we're gonna to wanna to look at is if people are spending money on this. So we've got cycling, bike is a little bit lower of a search term, but I mean, that's still pretty difficult. If we go to electric bike, that's getting a little bit more specific, right? But the difficulty is still quite high. Um, if we continue going down here, um, we can find Fat bike has a little bit lower of a difficulty, um, a little bit lower of a search volume, but what we're looking for is if you have anything that has 1,000 to 5,000 searches a month would be ideal. Um, anything less than 1,000 searches per month may not be beneficial to go after, unless it's like super highly targeted or you know it's a specific keyword under your umbrella topic. So if we were going for fat bike, we could kind of look and see like what's underneath fat bike and maybe there's um, fat bike trails or fat bike accessories and maybe some of those are smaller um, 
in terms of the search volume. But the overall search term, if that thing's got five to 10,000 searches per month, that's gonna be a good place to get started. Now, if we keep going down here, we could see that what I'm trying to find is if there's anything that's kind of expands out upon this a little bit more. Um, like, uh, let's see here. You can see we've got dirt jump bike, which is a, another, you know, type of cycle, another type of bike. And if we just keep on going down here, we can see there's a lot of variations of, you know, kind of related keywords with our main big keyword. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to, I'm going to narrow this down just a little bit more. So I'm actually going to then go ahead and say uh, bike packing. So this is kind of a sub niche subtopic within cycling itself. So if you've taken your kind of big broad hobby interest skill, and now you want to kind of ratchet that down just a little bit. So if we pull up bike packing, that's a score of 53, which is fairly difficult. We want to find some stuff that is in the 30s or below, ideally. We've got bike frame bag, a bike saddle bag. Now this is all gear that is related with bike packing. Bike packing bikes, bike handlebar bag. The best bike packing bikes that's got about 2,000 searches per month with a difficulty of 41. Um, bike packing gravel, ooh, I like the looks of that. That is uh, 1,900 searches per month and it is a uh, difficulty of 33. And then also we can look and see that there people are spending about 25 cents. Uh, yeah, 25 cents, well, that's cheap. 25 cents a, for the cost per click. So they are some people are running ads on these keywords, which is good to know because if they're running ads, that means that they're making money on those ads. And uh, so they're selling something. In this case, they're probably selling the product, right? Um, but maybe there's some other ways that we can flush out some cash flow with that, which we'll get into. So there's a bike packing kit. I always like these kit keywords because you could, you know, have a, this is what's in my bike packing kit and then uh, have affiliate links for those products. Uh, only 590 searches a month, but something that you may notice or kind of take into consideration is that your keywords may have some seasonality to them. So as we can see here in February and March, there was almost no searches. And then interestingly, in June, there was no searches. I would think that, that would be still fairly high. Um, so the trend is, is kind of pretty fluctuating here, right? Now, what you can also do here when you are kind of searching some of these broad terms within one of your categories is you can actually go ahead and jump into the, some of these exact searches. So, you know, we did a bike packing kit. Let's pull up gravel bike packing. And what I want to look at is I want to look at the SERP analysis and I want to see who's ranking for some of these keywords. Do I see the same name pop up over and over again? In this case, there is this bikepacking.com, which has three search results at the top here. And I saw them on the bike packing kit as well. Um, if I were to continue going on here, frame bag bike packing and open this up again, kind of a low search term, right? About 500 searches per month. However, this is taking into consideration search trends up and down. And then also this is a very specific keyword within the umbrella topic, right? So there's bikepacking.com again with two search results at the top there. Um, there's also REI is showing up a few times here that I've seen. Um, if we keep going down here, bikepacking essentials, 
I'm surprised at how low this uh, keyword difficulty keyword search is. How many people are searching that? Um, bike packing gravel bike. Um, bike packing seat bag, gravel bike, bike packing. So some of these are kind of variations of the words. So keep that in mind. Um, some of these may be kind of duplicates, but they are worded differently. Um, salsa frame bag, there's a product there. Um, best handlebar bag. Um, so, you know, there's quite a few different options on here. Bike packing list. And, you know, we could probably just keep on going down the list here. Um, bikepacking Reddit. That is something that we can do is see if there's a subreddit on bikepacking, which I know there is. Um, and bikepacking packing list. A lot of these are pretty low difficulties. And uh, the keyword, the, the cost per click, there is somebody spending some money. Not a whole lot, about a dollar or less per click. So I would be curious to look into that a little bit more, which we'll save that for in a little bit here. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of keep on going here. There's still tons of keywords that are showing up here. Bikepacking saddle. I mean, if this list goes on and on and on like this, then, you know, you may be onto something. Ideally, we would see higher search volumes. Um, these search volumes are pretty low. We're getting into very specific searches here though, right? So got to keep that in mind. But as we continue going down, we're going to see there's fat bike bikepacking. If we wanted to go after that keyword, I would not say, wow, bikepacking.com is just dominating this search result here. That's something else to keep in mind as well, is if there's one player, there's one competitor, one major competitor that's kind of dominating and taking up lots of search results. If there's only one or two of those players that are kind of dominating, then you may have a good chance of squeezing yourself in there and, and popping up there on the top results because there's not a whole lot of competition. If there was more competition here on this search result, we would see other URLs, other domains popping up and actually kind of sharing these results with bikepacking.com. So if you are able to find a, kind of a, a niche or a topic that is not dominated by large competitors, then that's gonna be a, a good sign. However, it is kind of a little concerning that there's only one major competitor here because it's gotta make you wonder, well, is it working? Is it monetizable? Are they making money off of this? Or is nobody else going in here because they're afraid of not making money? So keep that in mind as you're kind of looking through the search results and seeing who is, is ranking at the top here and are they dominating the search results? Is there anybody else competing with them? Or is it just a winner take all um, situation? Now, so this is you know just one keyword in particular. So I kind of want to go back up to the top of my, my list here. And I want to look up um, specifically like dual sport motorcycles um, as that's another kind of hobby or interest of mine that I had. So again, a very broad stroke here, just so that we can get a, a, a zoomed out picture of what the competition is like. So the competition score for this is moderate. And we can see here, we've got dual sport motorcycles for sale, the best dual sport motorcycle, Suzuki dual sport, um, BMW dual sport, dual sport, so what I am curious, so you know, we kind of have like these branded keywords and then the word behind it. So what I would be curious about, and again, these searches, there's not a whole lot. I'm actually kind of surprised, but not entirely. It is kind of a specific market. Um, but I would be curious if, so we've got about 1,800, 18,000 searches a month for dual sport motorcycles. Cost per click is only 55 cents, so really not a lot of money being spent here. Um, and then the score is moderate, the competition is moderate. Definitely a search trend here, so come summertime, it's a lot busier than it is in the wintertime. So keep that in mind. Now, if we jump into the Suzuki Dual Sport, because that's what I 
would be interested in is can I make a niche website for just a specific model of dual sport. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna like dive in even further, right? So I'm just gonna say um, DRZ400. So this was the specific model of the dual sport. So that's something to think about is if, you know, do you need to go deeper or is this gonna be too deep? So there is quite a, a search volume here. However, a lot of these are for sale. Um, for sale again, uh, price, for sale again, price. There's one for carburetor. Um, so the, the, while the overall search volume is quite high, it is a very broad brush stroke, right? Um, but if we continue going down here and seeing, you know, is there some room for somebody to come in here and talk specifically about this? Somebody doesn't know how to, doesn't know what they're talking about there with the Honda DRZ400. Um, you know, my thought was always, oh, well, I could have a blog that is showing you all of the, like, the top 20 things to do to a DRZ400 and kind of the step-by-step -step process there. Maybe some reviews on products specifically for the DRZ400. There is quite a large uh, motorcycle form at one point. And actually, we can even see here there's an Etsy market for DRZ400. Wow, that's hilarious. So there's quite the... Uh, Etsy market for that as well. Um, that's something you can do as well as this. See, are people selling anything on Etsy or on eBay for this particular uh, topic that you're interested in? Um, and if you go to Etsy and we actually see here, um, so one thing that we can do is I'm gonna find one that's actually a little bit more specific. Um, So if we go like to this specific um, DRZ400 sign, banner sign, if we scroll down here, we can see if this has sold anything. So it's coming from the UK, which kind of makes me wonder. But if we go to their shop here, we can scroll down, we can click on their sales, and we can see what they've sold. Now it looks like they've sold a lot more road signs, but they've got quite a few other sales as well. Interesting market there of banners for garages. Hmm, might have to tuck that one away in the back here for a little bit. So kind of at a quick glance here, I don't really think that there's enough for me to go after here. Um, you know, if I were to maybe go uh, DRZ 400 mod uh, vacation mods, maybe I'll just say. Um, and let me see kind of what's there. But kind of at first glance, I don't really think there's going to be enough here. This says there's only 390 searches per month, super low. And with YouTube and Reddit and then a forum dominating that, uh, I'm not sure it's one that would be worth going after. Now, maybe the dual sport overall would be a better one to go after, right? Where we could do reviews on all sorts of motorcycles, dual sport gear, travel gear, um, you know, cases, uh, charging your your phone while on a dual sport ride, like all these weird things, right? Where we could kind of go down the rabbit hole of specific reviews and how to's for uh, dual sport riding or adventure riding. So there could be there could be a spot for um, this kind of broader topic. Um, if we looked here, there's like Dirt Rider, um, and then there's Dirt Bike Magazines. Um, so there's a few different ones here that maybe you could out you could you could try to compete with. Um, if we wanted to look at like, uh, let's see here, let's dual sport. Um, um, travel guide, maybe something like that. We'll see if there if we can pull up some similarities, um, and we'll see what what kind of comes out here. Uh, travel guide doesn't pull anything up, but there's uh, 
dual sport versus gravel bike. That's interesting. Dual sport rides, dual sport tires. So you could do some tire reviews. Um, dual sport trailer. Wow, super low search volume. I'm like, I kind of like don't believe that it's this low of a search volume, but maybe it is. Dual sport adventures. Um, I know that this forum kind of dominates this space, so there could be that that as well. Um, dual sport tank bag. Wow, 100, 141, only 140 searches a month. Wow, that just kind of blows my mind. Um, dual sport helmet has a huge search though. Um, could do reviews on, on high end helmets. Um, dual sport helmets again, dual sport plus, uh, dual sport motorcycles used. So yeah, I'm not really seeing a whole lot here. So far, the motorcycle uh, side of things looks, or sorry, the motorcycle side does not look very impressive versus the bike packing side of things. So now I'm gonna zoom out again, and I'm gonna look at a different uh, keyword topic that I find interesting, and that is um, RC cars. Again, super broad, um, used to play with tracks this uh, RC trucks and stuff like that when I was younger, those nitro powered things that would like I'd crash into curbs all the time. So I, I really enjoy that world. Um, there was a huge surge in December, interesting, um, but it's kind of slowed down a little bit. Pretty difficult overall, um, really good search volume though, 450,000 searches, 450,000, yeah, 450,000 searches a month for RC cars. Um, and then, you know, we got Traxxas as a brand within there. Um, you know, there's some other brand names in there as well. Remote control car under 500, that's even super difficult. Um, best remote control car, pretty difficult. Um, I'm just gonna kinda keep scrolling down here until I see anything that's in the green. Serpent RC must be another brand name. Traxxas slash 4x4 Unlimited. We don't want to necessarily go after the branded keywords. We'd rather go after kind of any of the review or the um, modifications, you know, kind of review type of, of, of content. Um, best RC drift cars. Now here's one that's a little bit um, more specific, right? So if we looked at RC drift cars specifically, there's a big surge search with those. I think those are pretty cool. I would love to get into that as well. I think it looks awesome when people are like drifting on a gar garage floor or like, you know, some uh, factory building or something like that. Um, so let's take a look at this. This is a little bit easier of a, of a score. I like that RC Drift Cars, the parent topic has quite a bit of searches still, 110,000 searches with a difficulty of 39. Um, best RC Drift Cars has 3,600 searches, a score of 39. Um, and then there's some specific brand name searches there as well. Um, more brand name searches. Let's see here, RC Drift Wheels, so Drift Chassis. You know, if you wanted to build your own, boy, I could see this being a dangerous habit to get into. Probably ends up being quite costly, which if there's some affiliate programs out there, and uh, you could do pretty well, and maybe eventually you would design your own car, or uh, maybe even import your own cars and sell them directly to consumers. All possibilities there. Maybe you could even, maybe you like painting RC car uh, covers or kind of protectors. Maybe that could be a thing where you paint these kind of exotic um, car covers and sell them. Um, micro RC drift car, so there's a, that one's a little bit more difficult to go for. Best RC drift car for beginners, that's got 390 searches per month. JDM race drift car, that's funny, Japanese domestic manufacturing. Um, RC drift kit, $480. Oh, that would be a cool thing. You could sell like a kit with like cones or like obstacles, you know, you could have like a dumpster and like cones and some like guardrails or um, I don't know, there could be all sorts of cool little things that you do there. Um, I could see this world kind of being fun, right? Of like building your own mini world. Um, RC Drift Car Chassis. 
So there's some pretty good search terms here. Nothing really, you know, no big search terms. Um, I'm gonna just kind of keep going along here to see if there's any other kind of big things that kind of stick out to me. Um, I think this type of content would do really well on TikTok and YouTube, um, but I won't go into that conversation today because we're focusing strictly on blogs. Um, best cheap RC drift car, that's a pretty low search term. Let's just refresh the data. So if you want to refresh the data at any time, you just click on it. Well, it's actually a 45 in difficulty. Um, so there's drifted, thuck, drive, hot cars, and then a bunch of YouTube videos make use of. So I am curious if we say, um, let's see, RC drift car accessories. If we open that up, let's see what the competition looks like. Are there people in here showing up over and over again? Hobby Town, Super Drift, RC Smart. Um, let's see here. Try to find something. Electric Drift RC car. Okay, there's a little bit more of a specific search. Um, Hobby Town. See, I think, oh man, this would be fun. I don't, I'm not going to lie. I think it would be fun. Wish I had the space to do it. Um, RC drift car price, um, RC drift car for sale cheap, um, ready to run RC drift car. So lots of options here. Again, the search volume is fairly low for a lot of these, but some of these are very specific keyword searches. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Micro drift car, 1,300 1, searches per month. Um, and looks like there mostly is people selling that at this point. This one drifted has showed up a few times though, so this must be, um, let's just go to their homepage here. Oh, wow, this is like really busy here. So it looks like they're mostly games. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably not tech guides. So it seems like mostly games. Um, if I go car guides, drift cars. So this website's kind of all over the place. Um, like it even has like real cars. So kind of interesting. Um, I think this is way too broad of a topic for this. Like this website is way too broad in my opinion. Um, they don't really seem to know what they're doing here. If you go to their homepage, it's all games. So that must be where they make the most money um, and kind of pull people in with the articles. Pretty interesting. Um, so there could be there could be a place for um, somebody to specifically write about drifting cars. Um, wow, this is ugly. Um, if you can find a niche or a, a, a topic where everybody's website that is showing up on the first page of Google is super outdated. So while RC drift cars looks kind of interesting, you know, it's kind of like looks kind of interesting to me and entertaining and something that I could see myself doing. Um, the reality is, is that this would be way too much for me to take on all the knowledge that is required here. If I was already into RC drift cars and had bought a couple of them and kind of understood everything that goes on in between them, and kind of already had a, a grasp of things, then that's something that I would go for. Something that does kind of possibly concern me or kind of just something to kind of note was the, kind of the the trend of some of these searches. So it's just something to keep an eye on of if there's something that is popping off and, you know, kind of trending, you may want to make sure that it's something that's actually going to continue to trend or has been trending long enough that's actually going to keep growing into its own market and not getting caught up in something something like fidget spinners where you know it's a hot item one minute and then the next minute it's it's totally gone and nobody is making any money on them anymore so make sure that when you're doing this kind of identification of a topic that you sort out the ones that are just kind of a flash in the pan for the moment so uh, I was going to pull up kind of one more topic here to go off of and uh, kind of go in like left field here 
and gonna go into the um, cross stitch niche here or topic um, as this was one that my fiance was into for a while and uh, I know it's got quite the enthusiastic market I should say I know there's quite a popular and busy subreddit for cross stitch and people make some really cool stuff so the big term cross stitch is fairly difficult at uh, a 50 uh, cost per click is really low um, which is kind of that's something you want to totally see because it's pretty low meaning not a lot of people are putting money behind it now I know having been in the business of making cross stitch kits with my fiance there's not a huge margin on these things however there is a good margin on the cross stitch patterns for PDF patterns um, so if we kind of go into a little bit more specific here, there's um, counted cross stitch, cross stitch online, Christmas cross stitch patterns, cross stitch for beginners is a pretty low difficulty keyword there. Uh, well, but then again, it's kind of picked up a little bit more there. Um, stitched modern. So some of these kind of, there are some that have got a quite the presence and have been around for a while. So we would be competing with them. Um, and th there's some really big um, difficulties here, but the search volume is definitely there. Um, and definitely some kind of good verticals within cross stitch. Um, you know, there's um, cross stitch Christmas, cross stitch Pokemon. Um, there's we could even go keep going down here and see what else comes up here. Um, free printable cross stitch patterns, so you could have some free downloads. Halloween cross stitch. So each of these kind of there is no kind of seasonality to this. If anything, there are seasons within cross stitch where your Christmas cross stitch patterns or topics kind of go off the rails in, during Christmas time, and then Halloween time you've got Halloween cross stitch. Cross stitch accessories is pretty low difficulty, so that's good to see if you're going for that. A thousand searches a month for cross stitch accessories. Little line stitchery, that's a new one. I don't remember that one back when I was looking into this world of cross stitch. Um, and if we keep going here just to see what else is going on, we've got free modern cross stitch patterns, custom cross stitch photo to cross stitch. Um, I know there's like a few softwares and tools that are in the cross stitch world that if you show people how to use them, that could be a good way to get some extra traffic in that way. Um, cross stitch stocking, blackbird cross stitch, Harry Potter cross stitch, stitchery kits. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit here to go off of cross stitch stitches, mini cross stitch, gifts, um, printables. So again, quite a, a wide range to go off of here um, and some pretty good search volumes uh, with some paid ads, but not a whole lot, nothing real big. Um, you know, eventually you could write a book. It seems to be the kind of thing to do um, is kind of having a book with all sorts of patterns in it. Um, it could even be an ebook initially, right? Just to, to validate your design before you actually uh, have it printed. So there is, there's quite a few topics here to go after, some good low difficulties. We'd like to see these green keywords and then between the 500 and 1,000 searches a month for kind of these smaller uh, topics within the broader arena of cross stitch. Um, you know, if you wanted to go broader than this, there's a needle point, but I think cross stitch is a good volume of 256,000 searches per month for cross stitch for the biggest keyword. And then it kind of breaks down from there. So this might be an interesting topic to go after, but again, it's not something that I'm as interested in doing, right? So I would have a difficult time continuing the passion of trying new things and sharing my expertise or my experience with that. 
So that's something to consider when you're kind of diving through these things is, is it something you want to learn more about or is it something that you, you kind of had your interest in it and now it's waned and you don't really want to go back down the rabbit hole because you don't want to force yourself to become a authority on this topic if you're not that interested in it. So maybe let's throw in one more topic here, if, uh, if I may, just to kind of give you, you know, another thing to, to look at here, okay? So let's, let's take a look at uh, the area of mini trucks or kind of small trucks, specifically the Chevy Love. So we're going to kind of explore that kind of subtopic within older vehicles or older cars. If you like absolutely love your Chevy Love or maybe you love your Honda Civic Wagon. That was another one that I used to have that I enjoyed a lot. So the Chevy Love only has a total search volume of 14,800 searches a month. Moderate difficulty. Um, so really not a ton of traffic here. So, you know, instantly I can see that this is not a good winner here. We might have to go broader with the topic because all of these are very low search terms. Um, you know, I mean, instantly we're getting into the double digits here very quickly. So that pretty much x -nays this one from the list, which is too bad, but maybe we can say a uh, mini truck and see what comes up here just to see if, you know if we just popped up a level if there would be any extra significance there um, some of these I might not even know um, because a lot of these might be closer along the lines of like ones that you got to import yeah these things here which are pretty cool but uh, god they're so cool um, I don't know these things are they're weird and I don't think that you can buy them, have them in every country, but look how crazy these look. Um, there's probably a market for this. I mean, obviously there is if these people are importing them. God, they're so cool. I don't know, I just love these mini trucks things. They're just, I think they look awesome. Anyways, um, so mini truck, wow, super low difficulty. Uh, only 60,000 searches a month though, so that's instantly like very small market, right? Um, and then, you know, these are kind of many, some brands underneath that. Um, so very small market indeed. So another one that I would probably not go after, which is too bad. Um, man, mini Peterbilt, what? Um, which kind of actually brings me to maybe look up something different here, which is um, Mini Peterbilt. Huh, TikTok is showing up here. Interesting. Um, what? I just have to see this. Mini Peterbilt. Why is it Mini Peterbilt? Huh. I don't think there is any mini thing, anything mini about this. Although maybe this is. Okay, this is a mini That's pretty cool. Um, I don't think you could write a blog and have a blog. That's cool. It's like a little like, golf cart. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, I don't think you're going to be able to build a blog around that. But this does bring me up to uh, think about like model model trucks, um, model cars. Let's say like model model trucks. Let's start with that just to see what kind of comes about here if we search model trucks. Um, again, we jump into RCs pretty quickly here. Um, hmm, RCs, 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 man. So I'm trying to find like model, 
car kits maybe I'm trying to find you know like where you piece everything together you could also do like model planes as well there's even and there's even like RC planes right that's a whole other topic outside of the RC cars and so I'm trying to, to show you that you should really kind of exhaust your interest hobbies skills and transformation list really put it through the ringer and make sure that you put everything that's on those that list through the keyword tool to see how big of a volume how big of a search there actually is again pretty small search here model car kits 33,000 searches a month model cars to build 30 wow very small market indeed um, and I don't think this is going to be a growing market if anything I think this is a dying market um, I think there's going to be less and less people building these out. I think people want more um, interactive things, right? So I think that this is uh, kind of a dying industry here. So keep that in mind when you're looking at things. Think about is, is this a, a next generation thing? Is this something that's going to continue growing in market share? For example, I know that it within cycling, the gravel cycling kind of sub niche subtopic within cycling has been growing over the past five to ten years and I don't see it going away anytime soon I've seen more and more events pop up it's kind of gone through the test of many years now where it seems to be growing in popularity and I understand why because I I'm a cyclist and I enjoy riding on gravel roads for many reasons i prefer gravel roads than the streets than bike paths for many reasons and also when professional when there's actually like professionals racing in these gravel cycling events you can kind of see that that's a trend which kind of moving towards that when you look at some of your sub some of your your kind of categories make sure that what you've got going on here is something that's growing and it's going to continue growing versus something that is stagnant or is it declining. So I'm gonna pull up gravel cycling now because previously I had looked at bike packing, but I'm kind of thinking that's gonna be adventure cycling, right? Kind of somewhere in that realm because bike packing usually overlaps with gravel cycling and gravel cycling usually overlaps with bike packing. So um, I'm gonna pull that up because I'm also like very fond of this idea I've been wanting to have a gravel cycling blog for quite some time. So if you've got something that you've like, man, I, you know, you had this idea years ago and you just never got around to it, put that one in the search console here on, on the key search tool and see what comes up because it could be that there's a big market for it. If you've been brewing on this idea for years, like I have, um, it's been like three years now that I said I was going to create this thing and I never did because I need something that made more money faster. Um, so this is definitely a seasonal thing, right? I can see in November and December, very low search trends. Still, you know, 60% of the search trend is there, but come June, that's going to be where, where we're going to find a lot of people. Wow, the New York Times is even writing about this? <sighs> I don't know if I'm happy about that. Uh, I mean, I guess that's no, that's when you know you made it, right? Gravelcyclist.com. Um, so this is a blog that I... I feel like I could do a better job. Um, that's something to look at is when you when you find something that you're like, okay, there is a good search volume here. Granted, gravel cycling only has 3,600 searches per month, but if we look at some of these kind of bigger topics here, like people searching gravel bike, best gravel bikes, 12,000 searches per month. Um, gravel bike for sale, a little bit bigger. Um, gravel road bike. I almost start to wonder, am I jading myself by, by just seeing what I want to see, right? Ridinggravel.com, let's look at that. Oh yes, I remember searching these people before too. Again, I, I feel like I could do a better job than this. Um, I feel like it's not very modern. It's not really built for, um, for mobile, for, first of all. Um, and uh, so yeah, I think I think I could do better, but then I kind of wonder: should it be a cycling wide thing? Um, you know, like this bike radar. They they talk about road, mountain bike, gravel, um, beginners. So they kind of have a little bit of 
of a broader scope, right? Which may be the way to go of, of something that's like a little bit more inclusive, I guess would be the right word, or um, kind of a broader topic. Washington Post even, jeez. It's kind of frustrating when these big companies or these kind of big conglomerates come in and start writing articles because then it gets kind of difficult to rank for them because they've got so much authority. You know, they've been around for so long and have so many backlinks. We'll get into backlinks in the future, but I don't want you to think about that right now. However, I think that as time goes on, Google is going to reward those who are specific in their vertical. Um, I don't think that the New York Times, these are recent articles, or so they say. Oh, gosh, this one was just written, which really makes me go, oh man, I need to get on this. Gravel biking is picking up speed. And of course, because I don't have a, a faster bicycles than cyclists to explore. It'd be cool if I could actually read this. I, this is one thing that kind of frustrates me. Google will put this thing to the top, but you can't read it unless you have a subscription. So what the heck, bike perfect. So again, a very wide, wide topic here. And uh, you know, that kind of makes me think, well, you know, uh, we may want to go after kind of the touring, there's gravel touring 1900. Boy, you know, it, it might be wise to go after kind of the larger segment of cycling and maybe we're looking for those who are adventurous in the gravel, outdoors, bike packing, bike touring. Let's see bike touring. Um, so that's, that's a big industry as well. And these things also have large purchases, right? Like you're, you're buying a bike, you're buying gear, you're buying sleeping gear. Um, like there's, there's a wide range of things that, you, that go along with it bike touring adventure bike. Um, so these are specific brands. So we could do reviews on these brands. Um, Pedal Tavern, huh? that's a cool name. Um, best touring bikes, touring, 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 touring bikes for sale. Um, again, though, touring is a little bit different. Adventure cycling, cycling about, that's a one. So, once you see a competitor that you're like, okay, well, clearly oh, the bike packing bikers, bike buyer's guide. See, this is what happens when you sleep on it, right? As I, this could have been my website, but I am going to tell you to try not to get discouraged when looking at the competition and being like, oh my gosh, I can't ever write what they can. But just remember that these, this, all of these guys started with um, with nothing, right? With just a empty blog, potentially an empty WordPress site at one point. So try not to get discouraged. So once you've kind of honed in on a few specifics, then what you want to do is go ahead and grab some of the big competitors that you keep seeing popping up in the search results. So once you've kind of narrowed down, maybe you've got two or three uh, main categories, main things that you want to focus on, main topics, then go ahead and, and kind of go through some of the search results and see, okay, uh, who's showing up in these search results, right? So we've got adventurecycling.org. This is a big conglomerate. And then we've also got uh, bikepacking.com. So we're going to take this bikepacking.com and we're going to go to our competitive analysis and we're going to see what keywords these competitors are ranking for. So up here, competitive analysis, we're going to go to organic keywords and we're going to drop them in there. And then by rank, we're going to look up the entire domain. So we're going to actually just do the whole domain right there. And we're going to go ahead and hit search. And then we're going to see what they're ranking for. And this gives us an idea of where they get their traffic from, right? So this will show every keyword that they're ranking for of 1,000 entries. So it tapped out that says we found 4, 43,000 keywords. I want to sort this by traffic and sort by the highest amount of traffic, right? So 
this is going to give us a good idea of like, okay, is there some big keywords that we can go after that are somewhat easy to rank, right? So if we've got uh, a high volume and then a moderate, easy difficulty, right, in the green here, that's going to be something that we want to take note of versus kind of these, you know, larger volumes, but super hard to target, super hard to, to rank for. We're, we'll put those on our list, but we're going to save them for later. Um, so if we continue going down here and seeing some good keywords here, now a lot of these are quite large reviews of bikes, of gear, um, and as we continue going down here, there's tons of green, which I love seeing all this green next to these 8,000, 2,000, uh, 5,000 searches per month. That, that makes me very happy to see that. Now, we can see that bikepacker.com is ranking fairly well for a lot of these, right? These positions that they have, number one, number three. You can see, though, the difference between ranking number one and number three. They rank number one for this Salsa Timberjack, or sorry, they rank number three for Salsa Timberjack. There's 8,000 searches per month, but they only get 600 hits out of that 8,000. So if they were ranking number one, they'd get closer to 6,000 searches, 6,000 hits per month from ranking number one versus ranking number three. Now, as we continue going down here, um, bike packing setup. Ooh, I like that. Very, very good. Gravel bike packing. Very good. I like, I like what I see here. Um, and if I continue on this next page here, way more green still to come here. That's very exciting to see and makes me very happy to see this. Um, what you can do is you can actually go ahead and export this if you wanted to into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can also say show 100 entries, that way you're looking at a whole bunch at once. You can export this and then you can kind of sort, sort it in your Excel spreadsheet a little bit easier possibly than you would be able to um, in their tool here. But uh, very exciting to see all this green potential here. I would love to see some more in the 20s though. Um, that would be even better as I see a lot of 30s. Um, here's some 20s here, custom bike bags. Mm. Some of these might be a little bit more difficult to rank for. Um, bike touring with a trailer. And again, also these search volumes go way down here. Um, granny gear that doesn't even have um, a, a ranking on it. Um, as we kind of go on here, some of these might be a little more obscure or kind of difficult to get content for. Bikepacking Oregon, I like that since I'm in Oregon. I could probably come up with some good content around that. Fairly low difficulty as well. Um, 29. Um, let me just keep going along here. Just going to go through a couple more pages just to solidify the fact that there are good searches and good difficulties as well. And um, by the looks of it, you know, a lot of, some of these are certainly repetitive, right? They're the same thing. Um, so they're kind of duplicates. Um, bike cages, interesting. Um, divide gear, bike packing shoes, flat pedals. So some of these volumes are pretty low. So, you know, when we're making our master keyword list, I would focus on the things that have at least 500 searches per month um, for the start and very low difficulty. So keep that in mind when you're looking at some of these. So lots, lots of keywords to go after here. Some of them with very um, small search volumes, um, but some of these, you know, may come and go with time. Um, what makes me happy though is when I go to this competitor's site and I see just how much content they have and how how broad they are, right? Where that kind of tells me, okay, they've clearly been able to monetize this. Otherwise, they would not be able to continue writing all of this content. So it's a little intimidating to me, right? So when he was just starting out and going, oh my gosh, I have to write all of this kind of content. 
you can see though that they actually have a segment where you can um, write for them. So there is um, some of that where they actually have routes or they have uh, kind of contributors who actually write for this publication. And it kind of ends up being a little bit of, uh, they even have a printed publication that's somewhat new and events. And they also have quite a few sponsored advertisements as well from companies. So that's a potential uh, as far as monetization goes. So I like seeing all the content that they have here. Um, it's a little intimidating to think about all the content that I would have to write. Um, but if I were to look at one of the kind of lesser, one of the competitors that maybe isn't as broad, if I look at this, or I should say that is more broad, but I actually wanted to see, um, I wanted to go to that one gravel, writing gravel. So let's take a look at, let's input them. So I would suggest taking a few competitors and punching them in and uh, seeing what they come up with here. Let's take just a moment to crawl through everything. Okay, so this writinggravel.com only has about 2,454 keywords. So much smaller um, pool of keywords to, to kind of see here, but that'll kind of give us a, a better idea of like, okay, what could I realistically expect to do in the next year? Because bikepacking.com has a ton of articles. Um, we're not talking just a couple hundred articles, we're talking um, you know, probably north of 500 articles, I would say. Um, so if we look at some of these keywords and we kind of just jump to, uh, okay, so that's like a, that's a tire brand. So that's um, a potential review post there. Um, let's see, this one, 21, I like that, lead out. Okay, that must be a brand. Um, kind of a lot of branded review type of things, so very, kind of a, some obscure tools um, and other gear that they have reviews on. So a lot of review type content, um, pretty much 90% review content versus like guides or, or gear guides. And it seems mostly like components and accessories. So I like this approach, um, nutrition supplements review also. Uh, seems a little bit cheaper possibly than, you know, buying a bike or going and, and trying out a bike for a weekend. Um, definitely a little bit, seems a little bit easier to jump into. Um, gravel news. So a bit of news stuff as well. Accessories review. Accessories reviews. So somewhat uh, substantial here. Components, wheels. Uh, the search volumes on some of these kind of going down. Gravel Cannondale, that's a interesting. Um, let's see here, new Dura Ace, um, All Road, Challenge Gravel Grinder, um, GT Grade, Gravel Bike Reviews, um, and so. You know, I you know there's some some room here. I would say that uh, riding gravel isn't capturing a whole lot though, which makes me then go, okay, well let's go look at gravel cyclist, and this will kind of tell me if I'm crazy for going after gravel specific, or if I should go after a broader range here, which I'm kind of thinking a blend between bikepacking and gravel is going to be the way to go here. And so you might have to kind of experiment with this yourself to see kind of how broad or how focused you need to be with your topic. I forgot to mention while we were looking at the riding gravel here is to see if there's a particular way that they are um, monetizing. It looks like they've got some ads here and then probably some, um, if we go to news and reviews, I bet you there's some affiliate links for some of the reviews on stuff. And then, so ads, very slow loading. Um, 
let's see. So this is not a affiliate link. So that's interesting. Um, but quite a few ads there at the bottom. So I would imagine that they're not making much money on these ads down here at the bottom. Um, so probably mostly ads and then shop riding gravel. Okay, and then they have some of their own shirts, um, which I've thought about doing like some, some um, merch like that too, right? Um, but I'm kind of surprised that that's all they have. And then powered by Shopify. So they maybe haven't monetized as much as bikepacking.com has where they have their own publication. Um, seem like they have a lot more ads or sponsorship, sponsored posts, um, and then also some events. Let's see here, event disclaimer. Do they have events? They also have a forum. So that would be a good place to, to kind of research the target market. Um, event, hmm. the events listed are not our events. Okay, so they don't do any events. Um, so they haven't maybe fully tapped the monetization ability here if they're just doing advertisements. Don't get me wrong, they could be making some decent money with the advertisements, but I think that there's room for a little bit more monetization there. Um, and we can kind of explore that as we continue on here. Um, so gravelcyclist.com, so that's this site right here that we're looking at. Again, I think I could do a much better job on having a clean site here. So site supporters, so this is, um, these are kind of their, uh, their links here for, and then also buy me a coffee, so ads, and then also click here to purchase from Amazon. So Amazon affiliates, um, and then the, probably some sponsored posts as well. Um, and so if we, if we go look at like this one here, if this is, if this mentions that it's a sponsored post or where to buy, um, it doesn't say, but my guess is that Apple man probably reached out to them to do it. Um, and they also have a YouTube channel. Could be having advertisements on the YouTube channel as well. Um, let's see if we go to about, that could also be, um, wow, there's lots of kind of side tangents here as well. Um, okay, and then they also have the some gravel grinder. Hey, this is an organ. Um, kind of makes me wonder where are they based in Oregon? Or does it just know that I'm in Oregon? I don't think so, I think he's based in Florida. Um, although he could have somebody riding from Oregon. So they've got an advertisement here for the Oregon Gravel Grinder, um, which is quite a big event that goes on here in Oregon. Um, so let's see what they rank for here. Um, let's see, almost 6,000 keywords. So let's see the traffic that they get um, from Gravel Cyclist, right? Because obviously their name, um, Gravel Race, Bike, um, Gravel Racing, Bikes. I continue down here. Um, gravel Grinder Bike Setup, that's a very small search though. Bike Shipping Box. Um, wheels, race bike. I'm kind of leaning towards the fact that I need to have this be a broad cycling, adventure cycling type topic. Um, I don't think I want to narrow myself down too tight. So to confirm this theory, I'm going to go to one of the, um, this bike perfect uh, and I'm going to search them up here because if we go to their homepage, they talk about all sorts of things, right? Um, so let's pop this m them in here and then go ahead and search them up here, see what they come up with. Um, and then I will also 
look at uh, the cycling about as well um, since they've got I like I like where they're going here with things still very busy in my eyes um, like a ton going on kind of hard to like decide what I want to read um, so that part is kind of a little bit um, difficult travel tips very cool um, well wow, this is cool um, so I like I like what they've got going on here this is kind of the vibe that I'm going for is this more like touring adventuring um, yeah I think this is kind of the vibe that I'm going for so I'll be curious what cycling about keywords are so bike perfect has 33,000 keywords let's go ahead and see what their traffic is mountain bike accessories okay best hardtail mountain bike um, mud guards on mountain bikes so some mountain bike stuff there mountain bikes for beginners so if I want to keep seeing what's over here grips so again much more content here with some big search volumes right in the the thousand plus range that's what I like to see is more of those um, with some somewhat easy difficulties as well um, chain yes yeah, see I like what they've got going on here entry-level mountain bike um, affordable mountain bikes, mountain bike for saddle. So there are some good ones to go after here. Shocks for mountain bikes. I think we could really come in here and disrupt some of these things here. Cheap electric mountain bike. Oh, that's kind of a hard difficulty. 23 best gravel bike under $1,000. Okay, I like that. Um, boy, that's going to be tricky. Um, but I could see that being a great YouTube video also. Um, which maybe is a side note tangent that I want to add in here. If you've stuck with me this far, um, smash that like button, leave a comment because we're going in deep here and I know it's uh, maybe a little bit overwhelming and like, man, how do I even, you know, I'm probably taking too much time here, but I'm hoping that this helps you see how I think about these things and how you can do your own research to see um, and kind of comb through this stuff. Like you really want to take time to, to dig deep into what the competitors are doing and to see if there's space for you to enter this market and kind of shoehorn your way in. Um, because if you just start writing a blog post or you just start writing your topic, just start a, just start a blog for whatever, um, you're not gonna really have a full picture and a full roadmap of what you need to do in order to take this blog and drive it forward like a real business, right? We wanna have a business plan with your blog we don't want to just start a blog about anything so i'm hoping that as you're going deep into this research here that you're you're really getting a good idea of like this is what i would do if i had a strategy session with somebody a digital deep dive and we just went deep into the competitors so you're really getting like a full digital deep dive that i do with clients that costs you know eight hundred dollars or more to do this like crazy in-depth research and come out on the other side with a roadmap for their blog. So if you're loving this, leave a comment down below saying digital deep dive, loving it. Let me know what you're deep diving on and I would love to hear it. So um, I see a ton of potential here, best affordable mountain bike. Um, this, this brand is definitely ranking for some good keywords here and we're going to also look at some metrics around some of these um, these competitors as well so I'm going to keep all those guys up and I'm going to I'm going to show you how to kind of compare some competitors side by side to see how strong these competitors are and if there's still room for you so I want to pull up the cycling about because I really really think that this is closer to where I'm going with things I think uh, oh my books oh my goodness okay and they have books too bike packers buyers guide yeah um, yeah I think this is very much this is definitely where I'm going with here this is this is it right here for sure so um, yeah this is everything so um, so this is like my probably my number one competitor, right? Like just looking at 
Um, it's kind of got, because I'm so appealed to it, I'm my own ideal target market. I'm getting really excited about um, bike packing, bicycle touring, buyer guides, equipment testing, inspiration videos. Sign me up. Um, okay, so um, my, and I like that they put their about on Australia. How do I know? Cycling about, of course. Um, so yeah, very excited about this. Their website could be a little bit faster though. Maybe it's just my internet connection. Um, so let's let's type in cycling about. See what their domain pops up. So um, monetization wise, uh, let's let's just see here. Probably some of it might be um, some of it might be sponsored ads. Um, definitely um, their book is probably click here to remove all adverts from cycling about. Okay, so they, they have ads on here. I don't really see the ads because I have an ad blocker on, right? Um, so there probably is an ad right over here if I were to turn my ad blocker off. Um, and then sponsored ads, I would say for sure, probably monetizing the YouTube channel. Um, I would say definitely the books are how they're doing that as well. Um, I see the potential for a magazine. I know that might be kind of crazy, but um, you know, if you have potentially got up there enough, you could, um, you could have a magazine. Cycling About is a elite cafe media lifestyle publisher. Interesting. Um, consider helping support my independent resources. Um, okay, so they've got kind of supporters, right? Um, people who kind of just uh, donate money, kind of like a Patreon type of thing, but kind of on his own. So that's, you know, that's a, a possibility. I don't really like that model as much. I would rather provide something of deep value. Um, granted, they probably make, you know, might make some, some good money with that. Um, but I, th I still think that there's some other ways to monetize it as well. Um, I think merch would be probably, probably a good way to go. Um, you know, the margins aren't crazy with that by any means. Um, you could even do some definitely sponsored ads, sponsored blog posts. Um, I'd be curious if we could keep going through here and see if there's anybody who's got like a bike packing course or like, uh, you know, something that like, I would think that if I was just starting out, I had 50 bucks to throw at like, just tell me everything I need to know. Um, that might be valuable to somebody where you take them from A to Z on like, here's, you know, everything you need to know about bike touring or uh, bike packing and, uh, you know, avoid the landmines because if you can take somebody from A to Z without all the distractions and getting lost and, you know, having all these different opinions and stuff, if you could just take somebody from A to Z, just like this series is, right, where we just go from A to Z with uh, your topic finding and, and go into publishing your blog posts and publishing your blog and growing your blog. Um, I think that's super valuable to people. So that might be an option. Um, there could be other things that I'm not thinking of. Also, I, I even wanted to throw my own events. I mean, I've got a ton of ideas on how to monetize around the blog, the biking industry, because there's a lot of things around the biking industry. You could even do like a big event where you have people, you know, come to an event. Um, I think that would probably be the, you know, once you get a, a large enough audience that n knows, likes, and trusts you and loves what you do, putting on some big event would be pretty awesome, I think, and kind of bring your community closer. And uh, you could then help your local community or a community that you go to um, by driving a bunch of traffic there. So traffic here, let's just kind of quickly look at what they're ranking for and the volume. So best touring bike, big search, not too bad a difficulty. Um, 
and let's see here touring bike itself is huge yeah so touring tour biking touring biking is much bigger broader of a topic than bike packing they're kind of one in the same ish they're kind of a little different though so that's interesting to see um flat bars on road bike um aero bars for mountain bike um internal hub bikes so i see i see quite a bit of green there's definitely some some tough ones right but these are pretty big terms um let me make it so i can see 100 searches here um again you can if you are coming across your competitor download the excel spreadsheet stick it away and uh and you'll be able to have content for days right um Okay, Kona Sutra bike, so that's a bike, their weight, so interesting. Flat bar versus drop bar, pretty easy to go rank for that one. Friction shifters, um, oh, 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 see all this green right here, this light green? Um, drop bar versus flat bar. Santos Travel Master, bike partner, um, bikes for tall people, fat bike fenders, fenders for fat bikes, okay, best internal gear hubs. Small searches, right? I mean, this one, these, these have 1,000 searches. Um, I, like, I like the super green there. Um, Pioneer back, back, backpacks, ultralight bike packing. Oh, yes, of course. Um, now, some of these are small search volumes for sure. Um, bike trekking, mechanical disc brake. That's a little difficult. Um, road bikes for tall riders. Small searches, though. Um, long distance bikes, fat bike fender, shutter precision, um, touring cycling shoes. Um, so I think there's quite a bit here. Um, bike touring to Japan, I'd love to do that. Um, yeah, because I think I think there's a room for kind of this bike touring and maybe even like ultra cycle racing. Because I also like I like that aspect of things too. So uh, let me just refer to my notes here real quick. So hopefully this kind of helped you get an idea of like okay, let me go deep with this research mode. Cross off anything that is not having large search volumes. Doesn't have a bunch of things to write about. Um, and also where there's no competition, right? If there's no competition at all, then you need to be weary. If there's quite a bit of competition, then that's a good sign. Um, if the competition is super fierce, like if you're trying to go into like um, computer reviews and you've got like PC Magazine and CNET and um, a bunch of other big competitors, then you might want to think twice about that. It's going to be very difficult to do that. Um, you might want to pick something much easier with smaller competitors and uh, something that you can still get your shoe in because the thing is is that you know if this is your first blog you want to start getting momentum quickly and that's where picking something that is easy enough to start ranking for has plenty for you to write about and where the competitors aren't too fierce um, that's a good place to start so that way you're not feeling overwhelmed um, so, you know, flat bars on road bikes, that's 9,900 searches. Wow. Um, and pretty easy difficulty. Um, I mean, best touring bike, even that is like fairly easy. So, you know, avoid the red where possible. Um, you know, you can work up to that, but again, that's going to be a lot of work. You're going to have to write a lot of content. You're going to have to work really hard to do that. Um, bicycle front rack, I've got one of these. Um, so, yeah, there's a ton of potential here. I'm going all in on the bike touring, the adventure cycling. Um, I think I'm just going to be around the adventure cycling genre, right? All right, so we've kind of flushed out our keyword topic. So hopefully by this point you have landed on one specific one. If you haven't, maybe you still got two or three. Keep going through the research mode. Keep seeing what competitors are doing. 
How are they monetizing? You know, does it look like they've got a team of people helping them at this point? So where they actually have the cash flow to do that? Um, does it look like they're struggling? Is it stagnant? Is the competitors just a wasteland of like empty blogs that have been deserted? Is there a large search volume? Is there a big community of people outside of just a blog? Maybe there's a Reddit community, a Facebook community, forums, um, these sorts of things around it where this around your main topic where you know that there's gonna be a, a large hungry audience for your blog. So in the next video, we're gonna go, we're gonna take all this research, we're gonna take our main topic and we're actually gonna flush out our roadmap. So this is gonna be the exact blog post topics that we're gonna write about. And this will give you very solid foundation of, okay, these are the topics that I'm gonna write and you'll follow along as I do that for my own blog with uh, the adventure cycling topic, which I have landed upon. Now, I will say, yes, of course, I cheated and already knew I was gonna do adventure cycling because I've had my eyes on this prize a long time, but hopefully you can kind of see how I came across this decision, right? Or how I validated this idea. So, you know, I didn't just say, I'm gonna write about this topic and just go for it. I've done the research before, so I know that this is a good topic. And also refreshing my data on this was also helpful. So if you've picked out your topic and you know what you're gonna go after, you can share in the comments. If you're shy about sharing it, I understand. You know, sharing it with other people is kind of annoying because they might take it and steal it, which, you know, I say you should uh, reap your own karma if you steal somebody else's idea and try to take it. So let me know in the comments below if you've got your topic idea and if you're ready to move on to the next step, which is flushing out your roadmap. I look forward to helping you in that next video lesson. And until next time, peace.